Xbox Series X and the dynamic latency feature. Is it as revolutionary as Microsoft claims? Let's find out. Welcome everybody and thank you for joining me for another gaming news video. Today we will be taking a look at another exciting Xbox Series X feature, Dynamic Latency Input. Phil Spencer says this feature is as revolutionary as the jump from 2D to 3D, but what exactly is it and what does it mean for next generation gaming? Well, latency is a measurement of how long it takes for a signal or piece of data to travel from one point to another in a system. So when you press the X button on your controller, how long does it take for that signal to reach that game that you are playing? So what Xbox Series X is doing is fine-tuning all of those components that convolute to the input latency to ensure that you get a better response of time and that the press of a button on the controller is as precise as possible. Now, Xbox want to make sure that you get the most up-to-date input just before the game asks for it. So that means for example by the time you press the X button on your remote that signal is lock loaded and ready to go. Your controller now gets put in sync precisely with the game so the most up-to-date input arrives at the console just before you need it and all of that is done without sacrificing any battery life. And since all of us or most of us will be gaming on AA batteries that is great for everybody. So the Xbox Series X controller will be monitoring and transmitting button state changes so games can now access all of that information immediately. A direct quote from Microsoft here no more blaming the controller when you don't get that final hit in a fighting game and I can definitely relate to that. I can't tell you how many times I've attempted to break a controller over my head out of anger because I've missed that final hit in a Batman game or in The Witcher 3. Yeah, I have a little bit of an anger problem. But exactly how are they going to do all of this? They've improved the transmission performance by finally tuning the radio design and placement for optimal connection and reduce retries. That is for the controller. For the console they've completely redesigned the input stack on the console itself ensuring games will get input faster and be able to access that quicker than before while also eliminating delays that could previously happen if a game itself was very busy and taxing the console. Now that is a direct quote from Xbox. Now obviously to make use of all of these high end features you will need a screen or a TV that will support all of this. You will also need an HDMI 2.1 cable that will support 4K 120Hz. Luckily that is standard and will be shipped with the Xbox Series X but there is also no use to have a 4K cable but you do not have a 4K television with a refresh rate of 1 120 hertz. Now this is also so you can make use of the variable refresh rates. When games miss their frames VRR will show the result with the lowest possible latency. Now 120 hertz TV that support VRR typically have very large timing windows which makes above 40 frames per second performance free of screen tearing. Now obviously these specs are at the high end and you do not need it unless you want to make full use of all of those features. So 120 hertz is not a must, 60 will be just fine. These features is definitely exciting to me and I'm curious to know what you guys think of it but on that note this is where I'm going to end it. So if you enjoy this style of video be sure to put the like on the video, subscribe for more videos like this and please remember to stay safe, wash your hands, don't touch your face and I hope to see you again soon.